So for our first editing hack, I'm going to show you a really cool little technique borrowed from the world of makeup and cosmetics to create more depth and dimension to the face, all the whilst creating a more pleasing and attractive look. And it's all about accentuating the highlights and shadows in the cheekbone and jawline so as to make these features pop and look more defined. And all it requires is just a few clicks in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get started. And so the first thing we want to do is hit P for the pen tool and then to create a tapered teardrop shape over the highlight above the cheekbone by clicking once to create a point, clicking twice to create a second point whilst dragging the cursor down to create a curve. Hold Alt and click the second point to reset the curve and then click back into the first point whilst dragging upwards to create a second curve. Right click over your shape and select make selection and hit enter. From here, we can go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and automatically our selection will be loaded into the layer mask, which we can verify by holding Alt and clicking into the layer mask thumbnail right here. Click back into the layer thumbnail, then drag a point on this curve upwards to brighten our selection we made over the highlight. Click back into the layer mask thumbnail, then go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and select a value of about 70 or 80. This will help to soften and feather the sharp edge of our selection for a more smooth and realistic look. Now it's time to repeat the aforementioned steps, this time targeting the shadows under the cheekbone. Now, instead of dragging the point on the curve upwards, what you want to do is drag it down to darken this area. Go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and hit Enter to smooth out our selection. Repeat these steps one last time, now for the jawline, only this time we're going to drag our curve upwards to brighten our selection. Feel free to refine the brightness of each selection by adjusting the opacity over here until you're completely satisfied with how the effect looks. Moving on now to another little trick borrowed from the world of beauty and cosmetics, which is to make your model skin shine and seemingly glow from within. I like to use this technique in a lot of my work as I believe it creates a truly flattering and magical effect. So with that said, let's jump into Photoshop and begin with our first step, which is to create a stamp of all visible underlying layers and then to convert the layer to a smart object. This is a very important step for reasons I will explain shortly. From here, we can go ahead and click into Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and make sure you're in the Basic Adjustments section, and then feel free to increase the exposure, highlights, and white dials until you're fully satisfied with the level of brightness and luminosity in the skin. Just make sure to increase the whites by a relatively larger amount compared to the exposure and highlight styles, as doing so will have the greatest impact on enhancing the glow and shine effect in the skin. Once done, hit OK and then click into the layer mask right over here, which was automatically created thanks to the smart object conversion we made earlier. Hit Command I to invert it, and then using a soft white brush, start to paint in this glowing effect into your subject's skin alone. So let's now take a look at a before and after. And as you can see, in just a few clicks, we have successfully added in a nice beauty glow and shine to our model skin. For this hack, I'm going to show you a really useful little trick to efficiently clean up distracting stray hairs with just a few clicks using Photoshop's liquify tool. And to do this, we first need to create a stamp of all visible underlying layers and then hitting command J to duplicate this layer. Let's turn off the visibility of the top layer and rename it to expand outwards. Then click into the bottom layer and rename it to contract inwards. With the bottom layer selected, we can now go into filter, liquify. Once in the liquify window, we can go ahead and use the smudge tool right over here to click and drag these rogue strands of hair downwards and out of sight. Now, I know this might start to look a little bit strange, but stay with me here as I promise it's all going to make sense in just a few seconds. So with that done, let's hit OK and jump back into Photoshop. From here, let's create a layer mask, then hit Command I to invert it. Then using a soft white brush, start to paint in this effect over the strands of hair alone. This is looking good so far, but we're not done yet. Next up, let's click into our Expand Outwards layer, turn on the visibility, 
and click into Filter, Liquify. Now, instead of dragging the hair downwards, what we can do is click and drag the outer edge of the model's hair slightly up and outwards to make it subtly more voluminous and curvaceous. Okay, so with that done, let's now hit enter. And from here, we can once again create a layer mask, hit command I to invert it, then start to paint in this effect along the edge of our model's hair, thus expanding it outwards very slightly. Okay, so there you have it guys, a super quick and easy way to clean up distracting stray hairs with the added bonus of making the hair look more attractive and curvaceous. Alright, for this next hack, I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop's hidden gradient maps to beautifully color grade your subject with some rich brown slash bronze skin tones. So let's go ahead and turn off the photo's broader color adjustments and get started with our model skin tones. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an HSL preparation layer to bring down the saturation in the skin. Next, let's create a brightness and contrast preparation layer to subtly reduce the contrast in the skin by using a layer mask to selectively paint in this effect into the model skin alone. These two preparation layers will give us much more of a blank slate to work with and will make applying our custom bronze skin toning much easier. So with preparation done, the next thing I'm going to do is add in a gradient map adjustment layer. But we won't be using any of these default presets you see here, since none of them are particularly adequate or appropriate for skin toning. Instead, what we're going to use is one of Photoshop's hidden gradient maps. And to find them, all you need to do is click into Window, Gradients, then click this little drop down right over here and make sure that Legacy Gradients is checked. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of our gradient map window, you should be able to see the legacy gradients folder. Click into this folder, then click into photographic toning and select the sepia one preset. Hit OK, then set the blending mode to soft light. Reduce the opacity to around 30%. From here, we can simply copy over the skin isolation layer mask from below by holding alt and clicking and dragging it over and onto our gradient map adjustment layer. Now to further enhance this bronzing effect, what we can do is create a black and white adjustment layer. Select high contrast blue filter, then change the blending mode to soft light. Let's drop the opacity to 11% and copy over the skin isolation layer mask. And so with our skin toning complete, let's now turn back on our photos color grade. And here you can see a before and after of our bronze skin toning using Photoshop's hidden gradient maps. All right, in this tip, I'm gonna show you how to enhance your photos colors, all the whilst keeping things very subtle and natural looking using some gradient color bubbles. So first things first, let's use the marquee tool to expand out the sides of our photo, not only to fit the vertical Instagram crop of four x five, but mainly to stretch out and reveal more of the beautiful blurry textures in the background. This will give you a much broader canvas to work with when it comes time to applying your gradient color bubbles. And to create a color bubble, all you need to do is create a new blank layer and then to hit I for the eyedropper tool to sample one of the colors in the background. Let's first sample one of the reds in the window reflection and click into foreground color to shift our selection to something a little brighter and more saturated. Hit enter and then using a large soft brush, simply dab this color over the existing reds in the window reflection. Change the blending mode to overlay and then reduce the opacity to about 30%. If you're unhappy with the color of your gradient bubble or you'd simply like to refine it further, all you need to do is create a new HSL adjustment layer, hold alt and click just below this layer, and then feel free to shift the hue and saturation sliders until you're satisfied with the final output. And so I've gone ahead now and repeated these steps for the blues and yellows in frame. And so this is just one way that we can add some artistic styling to our photos, by enhancing some of the background colors and making them pop. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to color grade your photo with a professional complementary color palette using nothing more than a single layer in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and turn off our skin retouching and dodge and burn and get started. 
And so the first thing we're going to do is create a stamp of all visible underlying layers. And from here we can click into Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And the first thing we're going to do is come over to the white balance meter and shift the colors slightly to the left to bring out more of the blue tones in our photo. Let's also shift the tint slightly towards magenta to remove some of the unflattering green tones. From here we can go ahead and increase the exposure to brighten up the baseline of the image whilst pulling the highlights right down to zero, the shadows to plus 16 and the whites to negative 10. We can then crush the blacks, bringing them to a value of negative 59, thereby boosting global contrast whilst further expanding our photo's dynamic range. Next, let's move into the powerful color mixer tool. And starting with the luminance tab, we can go ahead and increase the reds and oranges to plus 100, reduce the blues to negative 9, and the purples to negative 24. Next, let's hit the saturation tab and increase the reds to plus 19, the oranges, yellows, greens, and aquas to plus 50, and the blues to plus 36 in order to add some vibrancy and pop to our photo's colors. Now let's jump into the hue tab and slide the purples to plus 20, blues to negative 2, greens to negative 15, yellows to negative 28, oranges to plus 10, and reds to plus 6. This will not only get the skin tones looking more natural, but will also help to organize the photo's colors to fit our desired warm slash cool toned complementary color palette. Hit OK and let's take a look at our results inside Photoshop. And so with the color grade done, we can now put back on our skin retouching. And here you can see a before and after of our color grading applied using Photoshop's camera raw filter. So with our color grade complete, what I'm going to show you now is how you can copy over any edit in Camera Raw to any other photo or multiple photos in seconds. This will not only save you hours of editing time when working on large projects, but will also help you create more of a consistent editing style across multiple images. So to do this, what we're going to do is double click back into the Camera Raw filter and then save all of these settings and configurations as a preset by clicking into more image settings, then create preset. Rename your preset to whatever you like. We'll call this one the Riverside preset. Leave everything else checked as default and then hit OK. Now what we can do is import any photo we like into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and select a series of photos from the same photo shoot. Right click and then hit open in Photoshop. Now, if we want to batch edit all of these photos at once, simply hold shift and click the final photo in the series and then click into the presets menu, find your saved custom preset and hit apply. And the best part is this is a dynamic and configurable preset, giving you the power to further refine or customize its settings to better fit the unique requirements of each photo. It really is as simple as that. Okay guys, for this next hack, I'm going to teach you a simple little trick to enhance your model's hair to really make it pop and look much more dynamic and eye-catching in seconds. This effect is achieved in three parts, and the first is to create a levels adjustment layer, and then to shift the white point slider to the left to brighten the highlights, while shifting the black point and midtone sliders to the right slightly, so as to ensure our shadows and midtones are kept nice and dark. Click into the layer mask, hit command I to invert it, then using a soft white brush, start to paint in this effect into the model's hair alone. So this is looking good so far, but we're not done yet. Next, what we can do is create a solid color adjustment layer. Make sure your selected color is white. Set the blending mode to overlay, then click into the layer mask, invert it, hit B for the brush tool, reduce the opacity, and then start to selectively paint in this effect over the brightest highlights alone. This will effectively create specular highlights in the hair, providing a strong visual cue for shape and dimension. As a final step, let's create an HSL adjustment layer. Then using the hand picker tool, select the blue tones in the hair, reduce the saturation. Then with the layer mask selected, hit command I to invert it then start to paint in this effect specifically into the highlights in the hair alone. Reducing saturation in the highlights is another great way to enhance the perception of depth and dimension in your photo. Feel free to refine the intensity of this applied effect by grouping these three layers together and then dropping the opacity right over here until you're completely satisfied with the end result.